Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 27th of October. India will lead world in 6G technology says PM Modi at India Mobile Congress. Pakistan violates ceasefire along border, opens fire at Indian post in Jammu and Kashmir. And no deadline given to Bangladesh PM Hasina to quit office, US clarifies on reports. And now for all the details, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said that India will soon lead the world in 6G technology as he inaugurated 100 5G labs across the country at the 7th edition of the India Mobile Congress in New Delhi. The Prime Minister said before 2014, India was a mobile phone importer, but now the country is the second biggest mobile manufacturer in the world. He noted that due to advances in technology, the future is here and now. PM Modi added that in nine years of his government, India's startup ecosystem has become one of the largest in the world and is in the top three. He also called for India to become self-reliant in cyber security. Cyber security के लिए पूरी manufacturing value chain में आत्मनिर्भरता बहुत जरूरी है चाहे हार्डवेयर हो सॉफ्टवेयर हो या कनेक्टिविटी जब हमारी वैल्यू चेन का सब कुछ हमारे नेशनल डोमेन में होगा तो हमें इसे सिक्योर रखने में भी आसानी होगी पाकिस्तान ऑन थर्सडे वायलेटेड द सीज फायर एग्रीमेंट विद इंडिया फॉर अ सेकंड टाइम दिस मंथ in an unprovoked firing, Pakistani rangers targeted an Indian post along the border in Arnia sector. Local villages also suffered damage from mortar shelling from Pakistani forces. A BSF personnel was injured in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory after Pakistan rangers fired without provocation at an Indian post along the international border in Arnia sector of Jammu and Kashmir. The firing from Pakistan began at around 8 p.m., which was retaliated befittingly by BSF troops, the paramilitary force said in a statement. This incident follows a similar action last week when two BSF personnel sustained injuries due to unprovoked firing by the Rangers in the Arnia sector on October 17th. The repeated incidents in a span of 10 days have also resulted in panic among the locals. Uh रात को जो फायरिंग हुई है ये बड़ा एक दर्दनाक हादसा है लोगों के दिलों में एक दहशत बैठ गई है पब्लिक जो है काफी पहले फायरिंग होती थी लेकिन उसको लोग भूल गए थे कि फायरिंग अब शायद नहीं होगी लेकिन अचानक रात को पाकिस्तान की ओर से जो है फायरिंग स्टार्ट हुई आ, हमारा जो एरिया पड़ता है अरनिया सेक्टर वहां से जो फायरिंग होती 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 हमारे एरिया के अंदर आई Meanwhile, in a separate incident, security forces foiled a major infiltration bid along the de facto border as they eliminated five terrorists of Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba in Kupwara district of Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. Defense experts believe the unprovoked border firing is being done by Pakistan to aid a similar infiltration bid before the winters. Kaybark. पार इस प्रकार की फायरिंग करके वो ध्यान भटकाने की कोशिश करते हैं सेना को या बीएसएफ को दबाने की कोशिश करते हैं ताकि उसकी आड़ में इन्फिल्ट्रेशन हो सके तो ये भी एक उनकी चाल हो सकती है कि इस तरह से लगातार फायरिंग कर रहे क्योंकि अब सर्दियों से पहले जितनी ज्यादा ज्यादा इन्फिल्ट्रेशन हो जाएगी वही पाकिस्तान की इच्छा क्योंकि एक बार बर्फ पड़ गई पासिस में तो बड़ा मुश्किल हो जाएगा इसीलिए हर जगह से कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि ज्यादा ज्यादा इन्फिल्ट्रेशन हो Moving on, a Pakistani High Court has admitted a plea from former Prime Minister and PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif against his conviction in two corruption cases, his lawyer informed on Thursday. 
Sharif, a three-time premier, had returned home from a self-imposed exile last week after being granted permission to travel to London in 2019 to receive medical treatment while serving a 14-year prison sentence for corruption. His conviction had made him ineligible to contest or hold any public office. However, his party says if PMLN returns to power, Sharif will become the prime minister for a fourth time. Moving on, the Taliban has finally released prominent education activist Matthew Lavesa. His organization informed on Thursday after his seven-month detention sparked condemnation from the United Nations and rights groups. The Taliban, however, did not officially cite reasons for his detention. Wesa from the southern province of Kandahar has for years advocated for girls' education, particularly in conservative rural areas, including during the tenure of the previous Western-backed foreign government when he said many girls living in the countryside were not reached by education services. The Taliban administration has barred most girls from high school and women from universities since taking over the country in 2021. The United States on Thursday rejected media reports claiming of giving a deadline for resignation to Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and added that Washington does not take sides on internal political matters of any country. A media report had claimed that a message was conveyed to Bangladeshi officials by U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary Afreen Akhtar that PM Hasina should relinquish power ahead of the general election. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller, answering a query on Bangladesh, said while the United States doesn't endorse any political party, it believes the upcoming elections need to be free, fair and peaceful. PM Hasina's administration has been under fire from Western governments over the past few months over the crackdown on any form of dissent. And in a friendly gesture, the Indian government handed over 20 cricket bats and shoes to the Nepal national cricket team on Thursday, which is expected to boost their performance and training. The Nepali cricket team, dubbed as the Rhinos, has achieved big feats within a short span of time. The Indian ambassador to Nepal said this is a start of a journey between Indian embassy and Nepal cricket team as it develops its own strength, competing with the best in the world. Members of the Nepal cricketing body requested for further cooperation and coordination with India's BCCI and efforts to facilitate further exposure to play or practice with the Indian team. I didn't have to mention much about what BCCI means to world cricket and Nepal and India being so close together as neighbours. Uh, we believe uh, together uh, if uh, with the help of the embassy, uh, we hope to get involved with the BCCI and, of course, with the Indian government to help Nepal cricket. Why? Because since we played India at the Asia Cup and then at the Asian Games, our cricket has taken another turn. Where A female street dog from India's Varanasi named Jaya is all set to embark on a journey to the Netherlands with her new owner. Meryl Bontenbell from Amsterdam during a visit to Varanasi found herself drawn to the stray dog. Recounting the fateful encounter, she said she was captivated by the dog's sweetness and charm and finally decided to adopt her and offer the homeless canine companionship. I came here to travel and to explore the city and when I was walking around Munchikat, uh, Jaya approached us and she was very sweet. Uh, she wanted to cuddle with us and she wanted some food and then afterwards we wanted to continue and she started to follow us. And then unfortunately she got attacked by another dog. Um, a guard came in between and rescued her. Uh, but I really had the feeling that I needed to rescue her. So I contacted Animota. And at first it was not the intention to adopt her. I just wanted to uh, get her off the streets. Uh, but then he told me that it's actually the possibility to adopt her and bring her to Amsterdam. Uh, so I said yes. It took Meryl about six months to receive a proper passport and complete all legal formalities and vaccinations, enabling Jaya to embark on a life-changing journey. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.